Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today I have a very special video for you. In today's video, we are going to see how we can make our own APIs and sell them. In summary, we are going to do some web scrapping. That means extracting data from multiple web pages and we are going to use Cheerio for that. And then we are going to see where to host it for free and where we can sell it. So let's get started, shall we? Just a little thing before we start. I wanted to thank someone very special. That's G Cardinal. Thank you for the coffee. I cannot believe it yet. I was over the moon when I saw that I got a coffee. So from now on, I'm going to be actually investing some time in making coffee um, valuable for you as well. So I'm going to be posting exclusive content in coffee for supporters. For example, pictures of me working, pictures of Peter intruding in my videos, um, maybe some short clips of my behind the scenes, which are pretty fun, by the way. I cut them all out, but look at this. He's always there. And I really want to try to make this like a space where we can get to know each other better, where you guys can give your opinion, uh, what the next video should be about content, what we would like to see more, more Age of Empires, more coding and so on. And hopefully we can create a new and very welcoming community of games and programming. Peter, don't do that. Peter, don't destroy my chair, please. Thank you. So yeah, that's it. Thank you again, G Cardinal. I'm sorry to be taking so long. Uh, I just really had to say something. And yes, if you're wondering, it's later in the day. I had the lights on already. It's dark outside. It was the whole day filming, but I had to say something. So yeah, Peter and I, we are very happy, right? We have coffee, Peter. Yeah, we do, we do. Okay, let's get back to the video. Okay, here we are. We are going to start creating our API. But what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. An API allows two applications to talk to each other through a set of protocols and definitions. For example, you can use the ChatGPT API to create your own applications using the ChatGPT capabilities. In our case, when someone makes a request to our API, they are going to receive a response containing data that we scrapped from the web. Okay, in order to start coding, first of all, we need an IDE. Or in other words, we need a code editor. I will be using VS Code, Visual Studio Code, but feel free to use any other that you prefer. If you don't have VS Code yet, go to their webpage and download it for your specific operational system and it's for free. The next thing we need is Node and NPM. NPM is a Node Package Manager that allows you to install, update and uninstall Node.js packages in your projects and applications. You can download Node.js from their webpage and choose if it's for Windows or Mac and it comes already with NPM. So just go ahead, download it and install it. I'm not gonna do that, I already have it installed. But once you're done, you're ready to go. Now that we have everything that we need, we can go ahead and open our VS Code and open the folder that we are going to use for this project. I am going to create a new folder for our project on my desktop and then on Visual, Co Visual Studio Code we can just open this folder. There you go. Something very important, we need to be able to test our application as we develop. So we are gonna use Nodemon for that. Nodemon will watch for any changes in our code and automatically restart the node server for us so we can see the changes happening in real time. So I'll press Ctrl J here to open a terminal and I'm gonna type npm install g nodemon. I already have it installed. But you can go ahead and there you have it. It's installed now. The g the hash G means that it's installed globally, so you can use it in the future for any projects. Now that we have this, we can also check that we have node proper properly installed by typing node-v. And this is going to show the node version that we are using now. This is very important if you're watching this video in the f sometime in the future. If you're using a different version of node, this tutorial might not work. Be sure to check it out, NVM 
Um, so you can install the proper version for Node. NVM helps you to manage all the Node versions that you can install, that you have installed, and to switch between them. It's really important to use the same version as some packages that we are going to use might not be compatible anymore with your new Node version. This is something really important to keep in mind in your journey to become a web developer. If you try to run a project that was developed with a different version of Node than what you're using right now, the project might not work. Great, now let's start with our API. Good, so we can just run npm init. And this is going to initialize our project and create a package JSON file for us. Just hit enter. Here it's going to ask our package name. So our API is going to be delivering crypto news from several newspapers. So since crypto is the topic, I'm going to type here as my name, as the project name, not mine, crypto news and hit enter. I'm gonna hit enter and leave blank these ones for now. And yes, is this okay? You type yes and yes. Good. So here under our directory, we can see our package JSON created. This file is going to keep all the information about our application, like the scripts to test and to start, or licensing version and also all the libraries and dependencies that this application has. So I'm just gonna give this an auto. Oops, that's me. You can see that all these fields, all these keys correspond to the questions that were previously asked. So you can still edit and change if you made a mistake or something, you can just, just put it here or leave blank as I did and now you can work on them. Good, so we see that our main file is the index.js, so let's go ahead and create this file. Now the first package that we are going to install is Cheerio. In Cheerio you can find in the npm library, and here you can find all the information about this package that we are going to use. It's very similar to jQuery, so if you have used jQuery already, this is going to be pretty easy for you. And this is the library we are going to use to pick the elements, the HTML elements that we want from the page when we are web scrapping. So we are going to use the Cheerio selectors to select the elements that we need. Here in the Cheerio documentation, we can see what we need to install it. Uh, it says I only need to use this command, so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go to Visual Studio and I'm gonna paste here npm i Cheerio and hit enter and it's installed. The next package we are going to install is Express.js. So we are going to go back to the npm library and I'm gonna look for Express here. There you go, it's the first one. So here, just like Chiru, you have the documentation and instructions how to use it and as well here what you need to install it. Express is a minimal backend framework for Node.js and we are going to use it to handle our HTTP requests and responses and to listen to our port. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to copy this command here, go back to my VS Code, paste it in my terminal and enter. Now that it's installed, if you want, we can take a look at the package JSON and you can see immediately that it appears here in our package JSON. And right next to it is also the version. So if you, you're installing now at some point in the future and it's a different version, maybe you can just uh, manually uh, change this version. But if you do this, then you have to delete the package log JSON and the folder node modules. They are created as soon as you install something um, and contains um, your files or you, the libraries you just downloaded. So the Cheerio files are all in node modules and package log contain more information about my dependencies and their own dependencies as well. So when you install a package, you're actually installing the, that library and everything that that library also uses as a dependency. So be careful when using NPM libraries. In the end, you can get a huge 
size for your final project just because you're downloading a lot of dependencies of dependencies of dependencies and so on. The next package we are going to install is Axios. So let's go to the npm webpage and type here Axios. Axios is a promise-based HTTP client for the browser and Node.js. You can use Axios to perform HTTP requests to REST endpoints and to perform CRUD operations. This means we can perform GET, POST, PUT and DELETE operations. Axios is a very popular package and if you haven't used yet, you will at some point in your career as a front-end developer. So again, I would just copy here the command that I need to install it. I'll go back to my VS code, paste it here and enter. And it's installed and it's already here in our package JSON, just like the other libraries. These are the only three libraries that we need for this tutorial. I hope that by now you understand a little bit how to install packages into your application. We are going to need one more afterwards for um, for our host. However, we don't need to install. We just need to add here as a dependency. We are going to get there and then you see what I mean. But I think now it's time to get coding. So let's go to our index.js. Let's start by defining the port that we want to open for our development. So let's just define a port. And you can put here whatever you want. I'm going to go with eight because I love the number eight. And we also have to initialize our packages so we can use them. So let's start with express. To initialize, a, to initialize express, we can just type const express. It's a standard um, script for it. And then we can just require our express. There's an extension for VS Code that you can download and then you can just press Ctrl Shift 1 and then you can choose whatever you want to require in your file. So I'm going to add Cheerio as well and I'm going to add Axios as well. This package, if you're interested, you can go here to extensions in VS Code and type require. What was the name again? This one, quick require. That's the one I use. Um, there's a little there's a little video about how you can use it and here are the commands. You can use Ctrl Shift 1 for require, Ctrl Shift 2 to import anything to your file. I think it's pretty useful, so it's a tip. Okay, so now let's get back to our task at hand. So now we need to call Express in order to use all the powerful tools and modules that it has to offer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign Express to a variable. Let's call this variable app and call express. So all I'm doing here is calling express and assigning it to the variable app, variable, a const, uh, constant variable, um, because it's not going to change, right? We are not going to manipulate it. So you can just define as a const. And from here, you can use all the, the modules that this application offers. And there's, there's a lot of them. So what we are going to start with is listening to our port so we can see what our application is doing. So I'm going to go with listen to our part. Then I'm going to go with a callback. And I'm going to log the mess a message in our backend saying that the server is running on port and get our variable port. So this is going to print 888. That's where the server is running. And there we have it. Now that we have this, we need a script in order to start our program. So I'm going to go to package.json and we are going to define some scripts. Here for test, I'm going to say nodemon index.js. So this is going to call nodemon to run our main file index.js. Nodemon is the package that we installed earlier that is going to help us to see the live changes happening in our code. It's going to watch the code and automatically update the page where we can see the changes. And to start our project officially, like a production mode, 
we can simply say node and index.js. If we use the start script to, for testing, every time we do any changes, we have to close the connection and start the project again. So that's why we are gonna use Nodemon for now while testing. Once we, we have it hosted and live, then our host knows to use the start script and it's going to use Node automatically. Now that we have our scripts, we can run npm run test. And it works. So we can see that our server is running on port 888 and is watching for any changes on this port. Wonderful. Now we can start defining our application. So now we can start defining the path. Um, let's start with the home page. To do that, we are going to use app get and the path. We are going to start with the home page, so just slash. Then this is the normal syntax, request and response. You can then manipulate them here in the body, but we are not going to do that. We are just going to print a message to know that everything is working. For example, um, this is an API for crypto news. I'm going to save that and here we have it. Server is running on port 888 again. So Nodemon noticed that there was some changes in index.js, just like we put it here in the script. It's watching for changes in index and automatically restarted the server. So now if we go to the browser and type here localhost 8888, this is an API for crypto news. Yay, it's working. So yeah, what we did here, we just passed the request, the response, and define what has to be shown every time that we go to the home page. We can also change that. We can change that, for example, to Bella, and if we save this and go back to our browser, then you see no response. But if we type here slash Bella, we get what we had before in the home page. Great, so now we can just remove this Bella from here. We don't need that. Let's keep it as it is. So what I'm gonna do here, I am going to copy this and I'm gonna sh hold shift out arrow down and I get a copy of everything just down below. But here we are going to set a different path. Let's say crypto news, for example. And we can remove this as well. We don't need it. And here we are going to use Axios to get to that web page that we want to scrape. So let's put here Axios, get, and then here we are going to use the URL. This one, I'm just gonna copy here, go back, Visual Studio, and paste it here. Now this is going to return a promise and we want to wait for it to be done so we can work on it. Um, to do that, I'm gonna do some chaining. So I'm gonna type, so I'm gonna visit this, this URL and then I want to get the response and I want to store it in this const HTML response. Now, something that I really recommend every time you're working with things that you don't know what to expect, you can try to look at them, see how they look like. So what we are going to do, we are going to log it, log this result, this response. And then when we visit our page, if we go here, make this bigger <laughs> we go here and remove bella and go to the home page uh what it was crypto news and then go back to visit studio we can see the whole response here it looks like html that's the whole page markup and that's what we are going to use now we just need to find the elements that we are looking for the anchor tags and extract them. One important thing here, we are getting all the HTML of this URL of this page that we want to visit. However, it's only HTML, what that means. Any content, any dynamic content that is gener generated by JavaScript, so like um, when you scroll down to a certain point, then it's um, generated or that is simply a JavaScript called, for example, there's a function that gets the latest news of a different page and then generates them three or four of them dynamically. We are not going to see them here. 
and Cheerio won't be able to work on that. So this is one limitation that we face when we use this, this system to do web scrapping. And in order to find this JavaScript generated content, you would need something more powerful like Puppeteer or Cluster. So we need to get our anchor elements here and we are going to use Cheerio for that, right? So I don't need to log this anymore. So let's start with Cheerio load and get this HTML into it and save this as the const dollar sign. This is the syntax for Cheerio, by the way. It's in their documentation. You can find everything there, how to get started with it, how to get the elements out of the page. So I'm just following their syntax. Now we want to use this Cheerio loaded HTML and find everything that is that contains every anchor element that contains um, a specific term, in this case crypto, right? So what we are going to do here, we are going to look for any anchor tag that contains crypto. So if we get back to this page that we are trying to scrape, so basically what we are doing, if we inspect this again, that Cheerio that is looking for any anchor tag with the word crypto, he is going to look for any anchor tag in the whole HTML, but it's only going to select the ones that it finds the word crypto inside it. So that's the one we want and that's the one we are going to select. Okay, so let's get back to VS Code. So this contains every single anchor element that contains the word crypto inside it. So assuming there is more than one, we can say for each of them, we want to go to pass it through a callback function. And for each of those anchor elements, we want the title and the URL, right? So we are going to get um, the title. To do that, we are going to call this, this anchor element and get the text out of it. And for the URL, for each anchor as well, for this anchor, we want the um, attribute H href, right? That's the URL. So to do that, we basically get the attribute href, <laughs> href. So now we need somewhere to put this information. We don't want them just floating around. So I'm gonna, just gonna create a global variable crypto news as a list and we are going to add all this information into it crypto news i'm going to push in this in my new list uh, an object containing um, the title and the url and now we can see how it looks like so we can just um print as a res json and we can print our crypto news so every time we get to we go to slash crypto news in our app we are going to get um, the crypto news variable as json containing all the titles and urls of the different anchor tags that contain the word crypto in this web page and since since there is a chaining here i also have to add um, after then we need to add a catch to catch errors if there is any we can just print it out and this goes away so let's go see how it looks like and enter and i got a, an empty list that's amazing okay so let's go back to visual studio and see what i did wrong so here i get the element to Shirio, then i have the tag oh of course i have to pass the HTML to Cheerio as well. So I want all the anchor elements from this HTML. Well, here, of course, I need this as well. And I need the title, the URL. Oh my God, yes, I need the data. If I don't pass the data, 
that's the response date. The response you can also print the response if you want to see how it looks like. And here is the response, how it looks like. And if we scroll up, you can see that's the data, that's the HTML, right? Because you have a lot of things in the response. So I've just forgot to add the data. That's what we need. We need the HTML. Great. Oh, look, I have one, <laughs> one article. That's great. Remove this again. And let's keep going. But great, at least it works now. We have officially created our first web scrapping tool and this is how it looks like. If it looks ugly to you, it's probably because you don't have the JSON viewer installed in your Chrome as an extension. I have that. So if you don't go ahead and install the extension, it's going to help you to read anything. Um, here's only one. It's not that difficult. But of course, um, if you have a list of it, then it's going to look pretty ugly and uh, JSON viewer makes it more readable. So I really recommend it. However, it looks a little bit empty to me. I think BBC doesn't have so much information about crypto. So what we want to do is add more information here, more data. So we are going to add more newspapers or more websites so we can scrap them all at once and get a lot more value for our API. Great. So now let's see how we can add more newspapers or websites to it. So let's create an array containing all the information, all the websites that we want to visit. I'm going to create here um, an array called crypto pages. And then inside we are going to add a couple of newspapers. I already have some separated for us. It's prepared. So I'm just going to pass paste here. And you can make multiple of them. Just add this. And one of them, of course, is our BBC that we were already using. Just put it here. And I also got CNN business web page. And there we go. Now we have to iterate through each of these elements and get all the anchor tags from all of them. So let's see how we can do that. So here we have all the web pages that we want to scrape. Let me make this cute. And now we want to go through each of them and get the anchor tags from all of them, right? So what we are going to do, we are going to loop through this array. And we are going to do this here outside. So I'm just going to go with crypto pages um, for each. And then um, website, we are going to do something. Good. And here I can actually use everything that I have already prepared. So I'm just going to get it out and put it here. So for each web page, for each website, each element, like this is one website, this is second one, this is the third one. Each of these objects is one website. And we want to get, instead of this, we want to get the website dot address. And then we get the response just like before. And for each of them, we are going to push, but we don't want the response here yet. We want the response here. So once, whenever we access the slash crypto news, we are going to request the response JSON for of this um, variable that we created. And we are going to build it outside of the outside of our app get and okay I'm gonna save this and I'm going to go there to see how it looks like and there you go we have a whole bunch of articles and you can see that there is the crypto word in every single one of them now it's starting to look better right 
Yay, there you go. But one thing that I noticed, um, the URL is still not completed. Um, that is because sometimes it just use the relative path in their development. So we need to fix this because if someone tries to open this URL is not going to open, right? It's just going to give an error. You, we need the base URL right in front of this. So this is what we are going to fix now. So let's get back to VS Code. And what we are going to do, we are going to add just the base URL to all of them. So for example, in this case would be the independent, independent CO UK. We add it here. And we do the same for BBC News, just BBC. And we do the same for CNN. Okay, so now when we are pushing our title and URL, let's break this apart. Good. Before we add the URL, we want to see if the URL contains the HTTPS or the www to see if the URL is completed. If it's not complete, then we add the space to whatever comes for us. As if it's a relative path, then it's going to add the base in front of it. And if it's a complete path, then do nothing. So how are we going to do that? We are going to use some conditional here. So if the URL includes www or URL includes HTTPS or HTTP, never know. If so, then we just keep it. If not, we want the um, website base plus the URL. Now we get a complete URL. Looks good. Then I'm going to save this. Let's see how it looks like. And there you go. Now we have complete URLs. That looks good. So we can test one of them. That's the one. Go back. Rehab crypto regime by UK. Yay, now it's working. Now we have proper URLs. So I'm happy with it. I hope you are too. I think it looks good. And remember, you can edit. You don't have to look for the word crypto. You can look for whatever word you want. And yeah, and then you're going to have all the articles with that specific word that you are looking for. So what we are going to do now, I'm going to show you how you can host this in back for app. So we are going to go to their web page and you can use the free tier just to hold your just to host your API. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You can even use um, your command line, your terminal to publish it. You, we just have to do some adaptation <laughs> in the beginning, but afterwards it's going to be smoothly running and you can sell it. So let's go. So first of all, you go to their web page and you create an account. I already have one. I'm just going to log in with um, my GitHub. And there we have it. I'm going to build a new app. You can choose what you want to, to have as a service. Um, we want the backend with Node. So I'm going to click here. Hope it's not too small. Your app name. I'm going to give Crypto News and Create. And it's going to create it for us. Twelve seconds later. <laughs> A few moments later. Finally! Yay! So you can even use databases here in Back for App. You can link your apps with a database and just save data. We don't even need that. We are just going directly to Cloud Code. I'm gonna make this bigger. And it gives you already a basic um structure, cloud and public folders with main.js and index HTML files. And now we need to set up for our application. So for the first thing we need, if we go to their documentation, let's go to their guide. 
It's going to explain to us how we can create a new application and what we need. So the first thing we need to connect to back for app to, to have our application work, and we need to authenticate. So to do that, we are going to use our app keys and we need this script here. I'm just going to copy it and go back to our Visual Studio code and we are going to add index.html. We can actually paste everything. I'm just going to paste everything. But it's really just basic things. We can put here, we can even put the title, crypto news. Okay, now we need to fill this app ID and JS key. Where can we find it? If we go back to the page, let's go to our dashboard and go to app settings, security and keys. And here we have the keys that we need. This is our application ID. We are just going to paste in our VS code app ID. And now we need the JS key, which is this one. We just copy it, go back, and we paste it here. And I can remove this. Bye. Save it. We have our index already done. I'm just going to get this. Go back to our back for app dashboard to our code. And we are going to need this here. So here we have our code, our keys. I see there's a little error here. Dup, drop duplicate type on that. Uh huh. That's true. That's a mistake from their side, from their documentation. You can just take it off. It's just like this is duplicated. This type text JavaScript was just like twice. So I removed it once. We have only one. We're done. Very nice. Great, now we are going to create a new file under cloud. We can call it app.js or yeah, I would say just leave it like that. And we are going to bring all our code from index.js. Just going to copy this and we are going to bring it to back for app and I'm going to paste it here. Now we need to adapt some stuff, right? We need, first of all, we still need the package JSON. So we are going to create this as well. We can also get from our VS code. So let's just copy this, go back, put it here. However, there's one more dependency that we need here, not necessarily in your um, development version. So now if we go to JS framework and express, that's exactly what we are using. It's going to give you a little tutorial how to, how to use it. But in here, it tells you exactly the dependency that you need in your package JSON. So I'm going to copy this. Here's also an example of the app.js. I'm going to copy this, go back to our page here, to our dashboard, and I'm going to add right on the top, body parser, beautiful. And now we have to modify a little bit our app, right? More or less like it's in here. So we don't need the port anymore. And we don't need this anymore. But we need the parser. So we need to require the module, just like we did with everything else. I'm going to add this here. And we need to call it. So let's set it up. There you go. You also don't really need this because it already uses express behind the scenes. I am going to remove this because I really think it can give some issues and we are going to click deploy. If it doesn't explode, it's a good sign. 
Okay, it didn't explode. Great. So now we go to App Settings, Server Settings, and we can go to Web Hosting and Domain. Perfect. Now we want to activate the hosting so we are able to access our application. And this is how it's going to be called. You can even create a custom domain if you want. And save. We can just go ahead. It's live. Crypto news. And here we have all of our articles again, just like we had it in our local environment. Beautiful. So it's working. Yay. So now we can go to Rapid API and sell it. So let's do that. I'm logged in, I guess. Yeah, I am. Um, you can just create account, an account here in the Rapid API. This is the web page. And you see I have already my little account in here. And we are going to create a new API. We are going to give it a name. This API, short description, um, gives you the latest news on crypto currency. I think this is not together cryptocurrency from several newspapers category we can choose here news and media and add okay so now that we are here we can go to hub listing hub listing <laughs> hub listing and the last option you have is to add a base URL. So you can add your base URL just like this. Add URL, remove the slash, save. And here you can, for example, make it public so other people can see and use it. You can give additional information if you have um, a web page where you explain the use of your API or anything associated to it, you can just add here. You can write more documentation on how to use your API. For example, if you have query strings, you can add some query strings to your um, to your API that makes it even more interesting and you can explain everything. Da -da -da. You can even put a logo to your to your application to look even beautiful, more beautiful. And in the endpoints, we are going to create a new one, create an endpoint. And here it's the crypto news. This endpoint is the yeah, latest news on crypto. And here you give a description, returns, latest news about crypto from several newspapers or new or and websites if you have an external documentation just for this endpoint you can also add here everything probably people and you can save it perfect now you can click here on top on the right top view in hub it's gonna lead you to your api page perfect and here you have everything you would see already my only endpoint is already there and we can test our endpoint hopefully it's gonna work oh my god it did oh my god i'm so happy it did <laughs> oh my god that's such a relief. Okay, it worked beautifully and it's here and you can sell this now. If you go to your dashboard, you can go to monetize and you can create different different plans for your users. For example, the basic version, you can add it. And if you just say it's like this is the free plan, right? The free tier. You can rate the limit of how many calls per minute, per second, per hour. I can say that it's only one time per hour. 
and it's the recommended recommended plan or not and save changes you can even add more objects more restriction you can change this to a limit of daily calls what's the quota limit i'm gonna say like 24 so once an hour and it's a soft or hard limit if it's a soft you can then charge for the excess calls or if you want a hard limit it's not gonna give anything once the person has reached the limit it's not gonna give anything any information back no response okay that's cool um i do want to point it out though if you go for example to omega and you say it's a monthly subscription of i don't know 150 bucks and it's unlimited you're gonna have an issue with back for app <laughs> because we are using the free tier there so you have to watch out for these little things but i think if you're making 150 bucks a month Per subscription, you can afford um, a paid tier already from Back for App. So you have to watch out for the limitations from Back for App before you start, you know, messing up with the plans. So be sure to have everything in line here. I just wanted to show you this system because it's the one of the few that I found it's for free. It's not Heroku, it's not a paid place that you can host. Back for App works pretty well, it's very fast, and it's free. <laughs> so it's already a win uh, on top of Hero Heroku because Heroku is uh, can be pretty expensive at some point. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you make a lot of money with it. Um, just be creative, make new APIs that um, can do more web scrapping of different words, just find some cool web pages that you can extract a lot of nice information from it so you can increase the value of your API. That's it. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you liked it. It took me a while to find somewhere, a place, a, a host that was going to be free and was working and easy enough to show you guys how to do it. There's a little bit of adjustments that you have to do in order to make it work um your code from development into back for app but i think the changes are very simple um just remove the express as i showed you get the keys and remove the the port definitions and listening and you're good to go and your your api is live right you even can get a custom domain if you want it might take a couple of days i believe it's not something that just in a couple of seconds you get your own domain but i think it's worthy and i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys like this i really really wanted to, to to make this video and i hope i was able to teach you something and to add value to you thank you so much for all your support i'm super over the moon with my subscribers i'm 800 almost 1000 i cannot even put in words what i'm feeling and that's yeah, I know it's small, but for me it means so much. So thank you again. And yeah, if you like this type of content, like this video, please. And subscribe to the channel for more. I'm going to do another tutorial on how to publish to um, Back for App directly from Visual Studio Code. How you can just use in your terminal, you push the code and it's deployed. So you don't have to use the dashboard anymore for small fixes and everything once it's set up. You just use Visual Studio Code and you deploy in seconds. So stay tuned, subscribe so you don't miss the next video and I see you in the next one. Bye.